Hi guys, I'm Dr. N and this is the Half Half. Um, if it's your first time, welcome. Welcome. If it's your second time, welcome back. Um, if it's your fifth time, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. So basically, in this channel, we talk about all things health related, all things related to the medical field. I also do a bit of skincare on the side. Um, so it's relevant to the high school kid, to the first year medical student, right up until there's a sixth year medical student, internship, concert, you name it. A lot of people requested this topic. So I think it's mainly people who are still in high school, people who are in like maybe the earlier years, first, second year, third year of medical school. Um, so today I'll be talking about specializing. Unlike other countries, let me explain how it actually happens in South Africa. So um, what I noticed is that in countries like the USA, um, one will go into pre-med and then go through medicine and residency. Basically how it will work is that they immediately go from med school to a specialty to graduating as a specialist in that specific field. Unlike um, how it works in South Africa. So basically how it works in South Africa is that we all basically go through med school. So we all graduate high school, you get into medical school directly. Um, start medical school, which is from first year right up until sixth year. And then um, from sixth year, you then graduate medicine. If you pass sixth year, you graduate. And um, after graduating, you then apply for medical internship, which is basically just a program um, or contract or contractual agreement over two years where they train you with basically internship where they train you how to be a doctor. You rotate in the various specialties, the major ones that are pretty common. And after rotating in all those specialties after two years, there's things that you have to submit. There's things that you have to have done. And um, when you get signed off, you submit your box to the HPCSA or our main, like, what's it, board. And after submitting that, you then move on to community service. And after ComServe, that's when you are a general doctor. So basically, we all graduate as generalists in a way. Um, then it's only thereafter where you actually um, then have to pick a specialty and you know, work towards specializing. That's if you want to specialize. You can even stay a GP or a medical officer um, in a public hospital literally for the rest of your life. After you finish internship and com serve, um, normally most people around after internship will know what they actually like and what they want to specialize in. And I know it's it, it's rather different because there's things that you might want to specialize. Like personally, I... I saw myself specializing in surgery while I was still in university and I actually love surgery. I, you know, I was good at it. It made sense to me. I really, I really like surgery. Then I got to actually experience it. I think that's the nice thing about it because what if you change your mind and you already, you already did residency in something that's not really something that you actually like practically. I don't know. I don't know how those countries do it. But anyways, so with us, um, you might have a different view or a different idea of what you want to specialize in in high school or university. Um, and then when you actually get to the workplace, you're just like, nah, fam, like, no, um, I don't want to do that. Sometimes practical and and theoretical sort of doesn't gel. Or you see how the demands of the career are like and you on some, I don't think I'm willing to, to give that much time to, to my job or I don't want a job that will require that much time you know, be taxing physically or that will require that much off of me. And some people are actually fine with that. They're okay with that. They love what they do and they don't care to work hard. But um, you will find that when you start working, your view of things that you actually like and prefer changes based on how you progress in life. So personally, there's some specialties that won't, um, that won't necessarily grant you the time to basically spend life with your family. That won't grant you the opportunity to have enough free time to spend with your loved ones or even have free time to travel and things like that so there's specialties that are really really demanding even though yes it's beneficial to the patients and whatnot but to you as an individual you're just like i i want to travel i want to have a family i want to have a normal life sometimes i want to sleep in on sundays like so it's all saturday so it's it's really it i guess um people change you know in yeah. saying that internship will sort of give you an overview of the things you like, things you don't like, things you might want to specialize in, things you might not want to specialize in. Um, and um, that's when you actually would change your mind or think of exploring other things. Most people who've already made up their minds post internship about what they actually want to do will try get a com serve um, in that specific area. So let's say, for example, you are into anesthesia. So what most people will do, I don't know now with the shortages of posts, but sometimes with ComServe, you'll be placed in a specific, let's say a specific hospital. 
and then as comserves, um, when arriving, you are given the chance to sort of pick and choose where you want to go. Some hospitals will say six months in casualty, six months in another department, and you pick that department. So there'll be one comserve per department. So then you guys fight among each other to try to, you know, um, get whichever department that you are interested in. So um, in saying that, most people who already made up their minds about what they actually want to specialize in um, will go work in that specific department because then you're gaining experience, right? So they'll go work in maybe anesthesia um, for the six months or ask to be placed in anesthesia for the six months so that they gain experience in that specific department so that by the time they move on to OMO ship, <laughs> they, they, like, they're able to get a medical officer post in that specific department because they can say, oh, I did my com serve in this department and I therefore have the experience, so do take me. Do you know what I mean? While they're doing com serve, they can do you know, diplomas or whatever it is that is necessary to give them an advantage to get a registrar post after they finish ComServe. So some people are lucky enough to actually move from ComServe straight on to being a registrar. So a registrar is basically so it's a post that is created, created by the government. And um, it's a post, once you become a registrar, you are sort of studying to specialize in a specific, you know, specialty or department. Yeah. So there will be, we all are MOs, and there'll be registrar posts that come out. And once those posts come out, um, people basically then apply for those posts and are called for interviews. So there's a couple of things that they look at um, in terms of selection processes when it comes to picking out registrars. And it's very competitive. It is competitive. And things like ACLS, BLS, ATLS, um, no, yeah, ATLS. Um, depending on the specialty, they look at what is relevant for that specific specialty. So most of these surgical trauma ones, ER ones, they will look for things like if you have those emergency medicine courses, um, if you are looking into going in to do surgery, they will look whether or not you have primaries. If you're looking into doing internal medicine, they will want to know that do you have a diploma, maybe HIV, do you have a diploma in internal med, um, do you have primaries in internal medicine? So primaries are sort of like um, they give you an upper edge compared to diplomas and courses and certificates. So it's basically that. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. <laughs> it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's competitive. Um, you have to have something to prove yourself by. Either your experience speaks for you or your academics will speak for you. So then eventually um, you will get that post. And then uh, most of these programs are four-year programs. But you have to pass. You can't fake. Like, you, can't, you can't fake. So most of these pro programs are four-year programs. And um, you, if you haven't written your primaries um, prior to, to getting the post, you then write your primaries during that four-year contract because it's, it's literally a four-year contract. And um, yeah, you, you write your primaries, um, you are studying your superiors or your professors, your, you know, you're the specialist in the department give you tutorials. So you're sort of studying while you are working after some of these it depends on the type of specialty some some just have part one part two um or one a one one a one b and then part two and then you have to go write a publication whatever i have a uh, research to have done research then you graduate at the end some will have intermediates but basically this there'll be exams in between ne, that you will be expected to write so basically that is that with specializing i guess there's nothing really to say so the issue at this moment in time is just a matter of whether or not the government creates the posts. So in terms of wanting to specialize, there's nothing you can do while you are still in medical school, really. Like, you can only start really working towards it while from internship, maybe start doing the courses, but they expire. Ne? So so it's better to maybe do the courses and all those things from, from, from ComServe or diplomas during ComServe or, you know, certificates during ComServe. Um, yeah, so so that is that with specializing. Nothing to worry yourself about. It's not. I know some people like watch a lot of like Grey's Anatomy and so on, all these medical series, and they get a, a little confused because they're like, okay, but this person is a resident. What's residency? What's this? What's that? It's this is how it works in South Africa. Like, there's no choosing a specialty while you're still in medical school. Of which I think that maybe South Africa should move towards that so that you will all graduate automatically as specialists. Maybe it wouldn't be so hard. Um, you know. 
for us. So that also will probably combat a lot of the problems that the government or the healthcare sector as a whole in South Africa is facing in terms of the lack of specialists and that the specialist facilities are only in like cities and things like that and a lot of rural people don't really have access like that. So so yeah, maybe maybe it's something that the 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 South African healthcare system as a whole, whatever, has to take into consideration that maybe it's better that they assist in creating specialists rather than generalists. Um, even though, you know, South Africa is a, is a third world country, but still, there's still a shortage of specialists. After the four years, you know, you can either work in public or you can work in private or you can work in both. Most specialists um, head departments. So there'll be like a, an, an HOD in OBS and gynae, HOD in orthopedic surgery. So most of their roles are more advisory um, more than it is hands-on. So people who do majority of the work are either medical officers, registrars, um, interns, things like that. So, so they're more like the bosses, basically. So if you have any questions, make sure you link them down. Um, it's nothing that you have to worry yourself over, especially if you are in high school. Varsity is also really nothing to, to worry yourself over. You can only really start thinking about it from internship comes of moving forward. Né? Um, but it's yeah, it's good to have a goal. So yeah, basically that is how that works. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you link them down below. Um, if you like the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you have any more questions regarding this, or if you need clarity over something I already mentioned, maybe it wasn't clear enough, write it down. I'll be sure to answer. And thanks for watching. I will catch you on my next video. This is me signing out. Goodbye.